In this video, I'm going to show you how to access the Bloxy Parent Dashboard and set up your account for first-time use. If you're not familiar with Bloxy, it's the tool that the school district uses to filter content on your student's school-issued Chromebook. Some examples of that content are explicit violence, pornography, and gaming. What the Bloxy Parent Dashboard gives you the added ability to do is to add in additional filtering policies for your student when they're at home on your Wi-Fi network. Uh, say, for example, you want to block access to YouTube. You can do that in its entirety. You can block individual and specific websites, and you can even add time control limits, uh, ac access times, if you will, to your um, uh, student's Chromebook. So if you only want them on for an hour in the evening from five to six doing homework, the rest of the time uh, they go to log into their Chromebook and it's not accessible. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What you'll need to do is have a web browser pulled up. I've got Google Chrome here. And get to this the Google search page just by going to google.com. And in the search bar, you can just type in Bloxy, B-L-O-C-K-S-I. First link that pulls up should take you to the site. It's bloxy.net. And this is the page we're looking for. Um, in the upper right, we're looking for the yellow, and when you hover over it, orange login button. We're gonna click on that. It brings you here. We have several options and a couple of parent logins, but what we're after is the Education Everywhere parent login. So over here on the right, we're gonna click on parent. And it brings you to the login page. Um, at this point, I'd recommend go ahead and bookmark or add this to your favorites for easier access in the future. But since we don't have an account created yet, we're gonna go ahead and click this link down here that says register here to go ahead and set up an account. So when we're here, we're gonna go ahead and we have to fill out each one of these sections. So you wanna put in a uh, valid email, okay, a password of your choice. All right, um, we're gonna put in a, uh, you have to put in a, a phone number and the reason for this is they're adding a feature set here in the, in the future Bloxy, the uh, Bloxy parent dashboard called Trends that allows you to actually set up text notifications for um, if there are trends in your students' uh, browsing or emailing behaviors. Um, there'll be more information about that coming out in the future, but the point is you have to put in a phone number in order for, uh, in order for you to continue with the process. And the, the last part, which um, honestly is the most difficult piece in all of this, and it's really not that hard, is you need to know your student's Aspen K-12 email. Um, and the easiest way to get that, if you don't know what it is, is just simply ask your student. It's the username that they use when they log on to the Chromebook. So if you have all of this information entered and you're ready to go, we're just going to click the Create Account button. Okay. So we are now in the dashboard. The first thing that we want to do is select a time zone. This uh, is important because of the access management piece of this. If you set, uh, say, from five in the evening to six in the evening is the only time you want the internet on, you've got to be on the right time zone in order for that to work. I'm going to set that to mountain. Um, and the first thing we're going to do, we're looking at the dashboard here, but on the left-hand side, we're going to go down to users. And you're going to notice right now that your student's email is right here, and it says waiting for validation. So when you register, what it does is it sends me an email, the administrator of, the, of Bloxy, and, allows, and um, I have to go through and approve that request. So the next time we come in here, it should say validated, and at that point, we can begin setting up um, our filtering policies. At this point, my parent account should be validated. I know that it is because I received an email telling me that access has been granted to uh, this student account that I created. So you'll want to go back to the dashboard at loxy.net and sign in with your parent account, and it should bring you back to the dashboard page. To verify that everything is ready to go, you just go down to users on the left, 
And here's the account that I had created, the student, my student's account, and it's showing as validated. At this point, I am ready to begin pushing out access time control policies as well as block list policies. The other thing to note on this screen is if you have additional students that have a school issued Chromebook, you can enter their emails in this field here and request validation. And then they will be added to your user table list with their own access time control and block list control. So you can actually dole out different policies based on your students and their particular needs or um, sites that you do or don't want them to have access to. Okay, so at this point, we're going to take a look and I'm going to go ahead and start setting up our access time control and block list. Again, make sure that you've got your time zone set to mountain time zone or whatever time zone you're in. And that's a critical piece when it comes to setting up our access time control. So we're gonna go back over here on the left. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to block, the block allow list. We have to create a block list. So I'm just gonna uh, name mine sample. I'm gonna say create list. Sample is now a container that I can go in and edit and begin to add specific sites uh, for blocking. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the pencil for edit. At this point, you can see that I've got uh, an area where I can enter an address and then I can add it to my block list. You'll notice that there's two buttons, block and allow. You really only have the ability to block sites because the parent dashboard doesn't trump the filtering policies that the school already have in place. So again, you can go above and beyond and add sites. So for example, let's say you don't want your student to have access to amazon.com. Can go, come in here and type in Amazon um, www.amazon.com. All right. Um, and before I hit add to the block list, I do want to make note down here where it says examples of use, ways that you can put in different um, uh, URLs or website addresses. For the best results, what I would recommend in the case of Amazon.com is at the end of the .com to put in an asterisk, and that's your shift and eight, number eight key, we'll put an asterisk. The asterisk acts as a wild card, which basically means block amazon.com and any page that exists within amazon.com. We found at the school that that's our uh, best success is when we add that wild card at the end, we'll make sure that any pages on amazon.com do get blocked. So at this point, I'm going to go over to the right and I'm going to say add to block list. So now I have one web page or one site in this case added to my block list titled sample. All right. I'm going to go over and set up my access time control now. Again, you can do these independently. If you don't want to set up any access time control, you don't have to if there's just a particular site. But I want to show you the access time control because I feel like it could be really useful. Um, I use it as a middle school parent. I use it at home myself. So again, we have to create the actual uh, filter name. So again, I'm going to name this one um, uh, sample access. I'm going to say create ATC, create access time control. Just like the block allow gives me the name of, of my um, container. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to edit it by clicking on the pencil. All right, so I'm in my sample access container that I just created. Um, and let's take a look at a couple things on the screen. So I have different categories up top next to my sample access name that I can block by. Okay, on the left, I have the days of the week. And on the top, these numbers represent uh, the hours in the day in military time. So Yes, we will have to do a little conversion. So 1,700 hours is 5 o'clock, 1,800, 6 o'clock, and so on, um, 6 p.m., 5 p.m. So the way that this works is for each one of these categories, bedtime, Facebook, YouTube, streaming, and gaming, these are sort of group um, uh, grouped categories that we can block by. Let's talk about the first one. Think of bedtime as everything. Okay, if I set up a bedtime uh, access restriction, 
it means that your student will be able to log onto their Chromebook, but nothing is available. Everything they search will come up with a, uh, with a block message. So, for example, let's say that pretty much every day of the week from 7 o'clock on, I want them blocked. I can come in and I can click on each one of these squares, or I can go into the gray and drag a box and fill in. So, any of these boxes that show up in red represent hours where the Chromebook will not be accessible. Okay. So I can hit save changes. So every day of the week, starting at seven o'clock, the Chromebook is not usable. All right. Let's say Saturday and Sunday, I want, I don't want them to have access at, at all on Saturday and Sunday. Again, I can drag over these boxes and for the entire day on Saturday and Sunday, the Chromebook isn't usable. So again, you can set up these restrictions to whatever degree you want to. That's, that's up to you. Just knowing that you have the capabilities of doing that. So I can hit save changes. All right. And that is now added to that policy. But let's say, for example, that, you know, I want my student to have access. Um, I'm, I want my student to have access to the Internet, but I have a particular problem with YouTube. They're accessing YouTube videos that I may not necessarily want them to see, or I just don't want them to have access to YouTube. You can choose the YouTube button up top and go in, and again, you can set them up for specific hours that YouTube's not available, or like I said, you can go in and you can grab the entire block, right? It has to be in red. If it's in gray, it means it's allowed. But if it's in red, when I hit save changes, YouTube will be blocked whenever my student's computer is at home. OK, and I can hit save changes. These types of settings and controls for the access time um, relate to whichever one of these buttons you have pushed. So again, I go to YouTube, everything's blocked. If I want bedtime to be set, like I said, from 7 o'clock on, I can come in here and select those and hit save changes. Again, a critical piece of this, um, and I'm noticing that my time zone looks like it's been changed. I'm going to go back on the set mountain. OK, make sure that when you're setting up your access time, that you've got your your time zone set. Um, otherwise, the access control may not work the way that you want. So now we have set up our access, our sample access the way that we want. Now we actually have to apply the policies to my user's account. So if I go back here to users, this is the first screen we're on that shows that I'm validated. I actually have to apply that access time control to them. All right. Same thing with the block list. So now the sample block list that's blocking Amazon.com and the sample access that I have blocking YouTube uh, whenever they're at home is now applied to my student's account. And you should see that behavior take effect on your student's Chromebook. OK, again, under these filterings, uh, filter policies, these lists, you could create different lists for different access and apply them at different times if you want to. Again, play around in here and you can set this up however you would like. That is it for this introductory video. There are other buttons over here on the left um, below users. There's trends and insights and I will attempt to create some videos in the future that explain those a little bit more. Um, trends is a feature that's actually coming out. Uh, you can click on the trends page and get an idea of what uh, what trends does or will do. Um, and then you can also click on insights. Insights deserves its own video uh, because basically what it is, is it, it will give you, uh, while your students are at home, you can, you can um, see everything it is that they've been browsing. And so you can see the sites that they're going to and the information that they're pulling up. So again, this Bloxy parent dashboard is a, a fairly full featured tool and again extends the already set filtering capability or uh, filtering policies that the school district has already set up on your student's chromebook hopefully this added control will give you the ability to shape your students uh, browsing habits uh, with a little bit more customization to your personal preferences when they are at home thanks very much and feel free to send me an email if you have any questions regarding this video, uh, and I will do my best to respond to you in a timely manner.
Thanks very much.